Hey guys, welcome back to this video. We are going to continue our discussion on the char data type. The previous two videos kind of laid the foundation for this data type. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about conversion between character data and integer data. So if you remember from the ASCII table, every single character has some integer value. The example that I am trying to help you guys memorize is that 65 is the integer value for capital A. What I'm going to show you in this video is that what value is shown depends on how we tell the computer to interpret the data. So to begin, let's open up this char program that we started in the previous video. This is what we have so far. All we are doing is taking in a value, specifically a character, and storing it in the myChar variable. Then we are printing out that character. To show the correlation between ASCII and integer data, I'm going to rename the variable. I'm not going to change it a whole lot, just completely to ASCII. <laughs> so I need to change this all throughout my code. I think that'll just make it a little bit more clear as we go on in our code. This first section here, all of this code, this is taking a character and displaying it as a character. But I want to display it as an integer. Before I dive in and do that, I want to add a prompt so the user knows what they're supposed to input. So I'm going to go up here and add a line and say print f, please enter a character. And I'm going to group all of these together just like this. Now how do we present a character as an integer? Well it all has to do with the format character or conversion character. Same thing. We are using percent %c here. Well, you can actually display this as an integer. All you have to do is change that to a percent %i. So let's save this and I'll show you. Oh, you can see I have an error. I did not spell the variable right. So let's go back in our code and make sure I add the s in there. Thank goodness for compiler errors, right? We'll save that. And now let's run it. Please enter a character. We'll put capital A and it outputs 65. So there's proof. I wasn't lying to you. <laughs> A is actually 65. If you want to try some other characters, you can do that. For example, you could try 6. That value is 54. Now what I want to do is take an integer value and output it as an ASCII character. This would be useful if you're ever creating an app to convert between ASCII and integers or the other way around. So let's go in here and we will create a new variable. We'll just call it integer and we are going to ask the user for an integer. Now the range we are going to use is 0 to 127. I told you in the first ASCII video that there are 128 different characters that you can use, but one of those characters actually has the integer value of 0, so the maximum is 127, not 128. The next thing, we are going to scan a value into that variable, and we are going to scan this as an integer. So you can use percent %d or percent %i. We are going to store that value into integer. Now we need to print it, but we want to print it using the percent %c conversion character, which is for character printing. Then we need to pass in the variable as an argument. Just say integer right there. All right, let's save this and make sure it works. Please enter a character. A. Please enter an integer between 0 and 127. Let's go with 65, and it outputs A. <laughs> now, the input and output is kind of crappy, so let's go clean that up. I'll add a new line here, and a colon and a space there. Now, let's run this thing. Enter character A, 65. Please enter an integer between 0 and 127. Let's go with 94. Now, I want to talk about doing math with characters. I know it sounds kind of odd, but because every character has an integer value behind it, we can actually use them to do math. So let's go back into our code, and down here, let's add to our code. We'll make a variable that is going to store the value of when we add two characters. And we are going to add a, and let's add a tab character, which is represented as a backslash t. Now, let's print this. I am going to print what is being added. So we could say a, which has the value 65, plus the tab character, which actually is the ASCII value 11. And this is where we render it, percent %c. And then to keep the formula consistent, we're going to put the character followed by the integer value. So in parentheses, 
we're going to render the same variable as an integer. And then we will put a new line. So this is a little confusing, just the way it's written out. So look through it, make sure you understand what's going on. Now we need to pass in the value. And we do that by putting the maths variable in here twice. That's because the first one goes to the C, and the second one goes to the D. Now there is something wrong with this code, and I actually want to run it to see if you guys can understand what's going on. So let's save it, compile, and run. Okay, so the output, A, which is 65, plus this huge space, 11, equals J, which is 74. <laughs> The problem is that the tab character is actually getting rendered. It is literally putting a tab. Sort of how we can use a backslash n to put a new line. So let's go back in our code and figure out how to fix this. If you literally want to put backslash t and not render it as a tab character, all you have to do is put two backslashes. This is called escaping something. So what we are doing is escaping this backslash and saying, yo, this backslash is not being used to format our data. All we want to do is present this backslash as a normal character. Now when we save it and run it, we should get what we expected. A65 plus T11 equals J74. And T, I meant tab. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that is how to work with ASCII, integers, and addition with all of that. So thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe. And let me know if you learned anything that was particularly useful for anything. Some of this kind of seems like, oh, what would we ever really need this for? And you might be right, but I'm sure there is some situation where you are going to be thankful that you understand the direct correlation between ASCII and integers. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.